Okay, everyone, let's look at module 26206-23, Conductor Installations in the NCCR 11th edition. This will be section 1.00, Installing Cable and Conduit System. Installing Cable and Conduit Systems. Running fish tape through a conduit run and using it to pull in the conductors is the simplest method of cable installation. Fish tapes come in steel, nylon, and fiberglass. For longer runs, fish tape should be enclosed in a fish tape reel. A basket grip is designed to hold the conductors firmly without taping them to the pulling line. Generally, wires should be lubricated before and during the pull. Many types of cables now have no lube insulation. Wire dispensers can help keep the conductor straight and facilitate the pull. Planning the installation. Proper planning saves labor and makes installation easier. Important considerations include reel setup space, equipment, and how to move the reels into place. If possible, conductors should be pulled directly from shipping reels. If individual conductors are shipped on separate reels, you must set up the same number of reels as the number of conductors. Planning the installation continued. To help prevent calculation errors, all runs should be measured with a fish tape. Avoid taking a final length of cable from the reel that is too short for the run. Each cable pulling project must be individually planned and analyzed. Rarely will two pulls require identical procedures. Pulling setups and location. The number of setups should be minimized and planned to take advantage of the best pull direction. Pulling location is determined by cable weight, pull height, practicality, number of setups required, and bin location. The location of pulling equipment determines the number of workers required. Avoid handling the reels more than necessary, and the best method to handle reels depends on their size and the available tools and equipment. Preparing raceways. Always inspect raceways before pulling conductors. A test pull can detect hidden obstructions. The raceway may also be measured. Conductors shouldn't enter and leave pull boxes in such a manner as to allow the greatest possible sweep. Installing a pull line. The most common type of wire pulling rope include nylon, polypropylene, multiplex polyester, and double braided polyester composite. The type of rope selected depends on pulling load, pull length, and total resistance of the pull. Good pulling ropes are lightweight, have little to no stretch, and a low friction coefficient. Pull lines can be manually fished with a steel fish tape. To save time, a blower slash vacuum fish tape system can be used. When using a power fish tape system, read and understand all instructions and warnings. Never fish in runs that might contain live power. Never use devices that are not designed to pull a fish tape. Caution. Any equipment associated with the pull must have a working load rating exceeding the force that will be applied. All equipment must be used and secured in strict accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. Preparing cable ends. The pull line or rope must be securely attached to the cable or conductors. It can be directly connected or connected using pulling grips or baskets. Most pulling blocks have a rope clevis as an integral part. Often grips require insulation to be stripped from the end of the conductors. Selecting cable pulling equipment. Short, straight pulls can often be done by hand. Hand-operated or power-operated cable pullers or winches are generally used for pulling power. Cable reels are set at one end of the raceway and the cable puller is at the opposite end. The number of wraps on the cap stand decides the amount of force that can be applied. Warning. Always use wire pulling lubricant that is compatible with the type of cable being pulled. Failure to do so can result in unsafe pulling forces and cable damage. Check the cable manufacturer's recommendation and contact the lubricant manufacturer about the compatibility of lubricants with specific cables. Also check the product safety data sheet or any applicable safety requirements. Pulling safety. When using power cable pulling equipment, read and understand all instructions and, wa and warnings. Use compatible equipment along with the proper rope and accessories. Inspect tools, rope, and accessories before use. Make sure all electrical connections are properly connect grounded and adequate for the load. Use cable pulling equipment only in uncluttered areas. Remind all workers that anyone can stop the pull if it seems unsafe. Types of cable pullers. Power cable pullers are available in various sizes and capacities. 
The setup for downward pulls and upward pulls are similar except the elbow's attachment location. Cable pulling instruments. A cable length meter can determine the length of cables up to 20,000 feet. A circuit tester slash wire sorter is used to trace conductors on de-energized circuits. A dynamometer is, measures pulling force during a cable pull. And some trade terms you should read over and become familiar with for this module. And some review questions for this module. When ordering cable for an installation, it is best to guess the length required to avoid delays. Order three times the anticipated length to account for terminations. Wait until the raceways have been installed so they can be measured. Use a standard formula based on the square footage of the installation. I'm going to say C, wait until the raceway has been installed so they can be measured. A 6 inch wire reel is best moved using a crane, a scissor lift, a dolly, or a bucket truck. And I'm going to say a crane. Test mandrels should be sized at 20% of the conduit size, 40% of the conduit size, 80% of the conduit size, or 100% of the conduit size. So I'm going to say 80% of the conduit size. A conduit piston must be matched to the size of conduit, discarded after each use, attached to the conductors, or twice as wide as the conduit. I'm going to say matched to the size of the conduit. Long pools of large conductors will most likely require the use of taped connections, basket grips, cable grips with set screws, or heat shrink grips. I'm going to say cable grips with set screws. Three wraps on a cap stand will provide 10 pounds of pulling force, 21 pounds of pulling force, 80, 48 pounds of pulling force, or 106 pounds of pulling force. Let's say 106 pounds of pulling force. All right, everyone, that's it for that section. The next section will be 2.00 high force cable pulling, and I'll see you over there.